we're back on Kestrel. It's been what three, three and a half months, nearly four now. Um, she looks good actually. She's um, she's dry. There's no water ingress anywhere. And we came down today to do a bit of work, but the weather's picked up. It's um, blowing. Well, supposedly tonight, this afternoon, 30 knots. The plan is that within the next three weeks we get the boat ready and then we will head out um, down the south coast of Turkey to meet up with some friends um, before we head over to Greece. From there we'll head up to Albania, Montenegro, probably Croatia, before we head back to Turkey um, to put the boat back in winterisation again. It's been freezing outside, isn't it? God, it's, I think it's seven degrees. Does it say and on the wind there? is howling. Does it say? It's 14 in here. Well, yeah, I know, but outside it's not. Yeah, stop being a wuss. So, what's happening today then? Today we're doing the engine service. Well, we're going to change the engine on and filter today. That was in there. So, what are you waiting for? Well, it's a vacuum, so it's creating a, a vacuum and pulling the oil out. So it's just a case of waiting and, until it's all come out. But the oil was very cold, so obviously you start up the engine to warm that up. And the pipe, the tubing itself, was freezing cold, so the ends weren't very flexible. Hence the tub of boiling water on the work surface there. So it's the 15th of March, it's absolutely freezing and it's blowing a gale. And I'm back down on the boat. A um, few jobs to do today. I think um, the first we're going to do is have a cup of tea and you can hear it rattling through the rigging now, it's, uh, it's quite breezy out there. But today I was uh, hopefully going to get some, um, some more rope put onto the chain. Because we used to have um, another 40 metres of chain but it was too heavy and it was keeping the boat too low in the water. So what I've done now is I've spliced some rope onto the chain just in case it's only as a precautionary measure because we've already got 60 meters anyway so we've got two new speakers so we've actually got music now out in the cockpit so what have we been doing today oh well I, we had to send you up the mast didn't we <laughs> so our friends very kindly andrew and helen um they very kindly helped us because the winches are just not that strong are they really no and obviously we needed a safety line, so we uh, yeah took you up the mast, had a look at the anchor light, and what happened up there? Well, the anchor light fell out, but luckily it was uh, the bulb had gone anyway, and we just don't have a bulb um, that fits that. We thought we had a spare. Yeah, we thought we had one. So we're going to have to go to the channelers and actually try and find one. And our reflectors died as well. And our reflectors well. died as well. So. Full of water, so uh, replace yeah. that. So our dinghy has taken quite a lot of damage, so what I'm going to do are make some covers, known as chaps to those of you who know. So the first step was to put some plastic over, um, make some markings where all the actual attachments are and then cut round them, which I've actually now done, and then transcribe that onto the piece of material which I'll show you. So now that I've cut the holes in the plastic, I transcribed that onto the material, so I just literally drew through the holes that I'd made and then cut the material accordingly. And what I'm now going to do is line them with a bit of bias binding. Okay, so this is the finished product with all the holes have been lined with the bias binding. They actually look quite neat and quite pleased with them. <clears throat> I had to do them by hand in the end. Quite hard to, a bit fiddly to do with the sewing machine. So I did the outside edge with the sewing machine and the little bits I've done by hand. So I'm a few days into the sewing and I've done two matching sides and the other part that I've done is the bow. I've just got to kind of join the two together. That's my next challenge. So what are you doing? I'm <laughs> velcroing. So we've stuck it all around the boat. Um, just the same as you'd actually repair the boat to be fair. Um, and the velcro has stuck really well.
and he spent hours making the new chaps and to be perfectly honest I think they're absolutely brilliant. Um, this morning we put the put them on, all the Velcro's nearly in the right place, more or less. We've put the the rope on as well and it all fits just lovely. Cracking job. Saved a fortune actually, because the material wasn't that expensive in Turkey. Got a sewing machine, the threads cost nothing. Oh, I think she made a brilliant job of that. Well, it's Friday morning, it's about the 7th or 8th of April. We're ready to go, we're on Kestrel. We came down this morning having packed everything onto the boat and the boat is just jam-packed full of stuff. Um, Kevin's doing a final wash of the deck because we've had that dusty yellow rain and I've just been putting things away and I've got to the end of cupboards really, I've run out of space. So the place looks completely chock-a-block and Kevin's up here doing a last clean. And it looks amazing because it was really dusty and horrible. We haven't put any of the cushions out yet. Um, Kevin's back down to shorts, which is pretty amazing. How you doing? Yeah, feels good. Yeah, it's Here's nice to be back. So what we're going to do is leave probably in about, I don't know, an hour maybe. And we're going to head round to a local bay and just sit there for a couple of days and do a few jobs, keep an eye on the boat, make sure everything's working properly before we actually set sail properly. We made it, we're out. First time, so excited. Feels really weird, doesn't it? Yeah, we haven't got a great deal of wind, but we're only going around the corner. But it's, oh, it's amazing. What a nice feeling. Made us feel a bit nervous leaving again, because obviously we've had three or four months off, but gosh, it feels good. After a couple of days in hiding this car, we've uh, decided to move on. We're only going around the corner. But that's a really good bay to be in, actually, in a high wind. It's very muddy. Um, we had 30 plus knots of wind and, and she stayed solid. And to be honest, if, you, if you're in a blow, that's a good place to be around here. Well, good morning. We're in Alagun Koyu, which is just another little bay around the corner from the marina. And it's lovely, as you can see. Very picturesque, beautiful countryside, got a forest behind us. So we came here yesterday and we're going to be here for a couple of days and then the wind kicks in unfortunately. Um, but tomorrow um, we've got a couple of friends coming over on their trimaran, which will be very interesting to see coming in. And um, we're going to have a beach barbecue, so that'll be good fun. So we're setting up some food and stuff for that. <laughs> be off with you. So we've wondered for a long time what these are and they're in all different shapes and forms but I think they do the same thing and it actually says on it bio trap for bark beetle wherever a bark beetle is I guess it attacks the trees but... might be hard to see but you can just see it looks like pinholes or woodworm type holes in the bark itself and that's what they're looking at I've just seen a beetle. It might even have been a bark beetle. Ooh. 
That is so cute. I could live in that. It's got a sorbo, which is one of their um, fires that they have indoors. You can see the chimney sticking out the side on the left hand side. Kevin's trying to break in there. So is it a canoe or is it a trough? Definitely a trough. <laughs> yeah, they've got their end wrong if it's not. Must be for the goats. Yeah, I thought so. You're the brave one, are you? They're all following suit. Time for a break. <gasps> That's really bad. You've done all that exercise and now you want to eat biscuits. Sugar rush. So on the way to a little town, which is opposite the, um, the anchorage that we were in last night. Um, Malagun Koyun. Yeah, but what's this one oh, called? Well, I don't know, you didn't tell me. I don't know, I can't actually pronounce it, so we'll put it up on the screen. Um, yeah, we're going to get some provisions. There's a couple of supermarkets here. Um, good anchorage, apparently. We're going to give it a shot. Uh, apparently it's about seven metres of depth in sand, so hopefully it'll be a good anchorage for a few hours. And um, We could have stayed here the night, but we're going to have a beach barbecue. Yeah, it's got some friends. Yeah, got some friends coming over. Yeah. Steve and Rachel um, with the two girls. And uh, beach party tonight. Um, it should be fun. Although it's cold, I hope it warms up a bit. <laughs> so we've landed in this little town. Um, <laughs> not too sure what it's called, or can't pronounce it anyway. Um, it's very quiet. I guess it's uh, before season, so you can expect it. I can't it. even tell you what day of the week it is today. I think it's Friday. It's Friday. Yeah. Especially when it's cold, because you start eating more and drinking more hot drinks. So we've gone through, um, what, six five-litre bottles. So we've gone through five litres a day of water, which is a heck of a lot, isn't it? It, it is. It shows you how many hot drinks we're having. Two drinks. <laughs> oh, it's lovely and warm here. Well, we've had a lovely couple of days with some friends, Steve and Rachel, and their two children, Emily and um, Eva. Evie, sorry. Evie. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't already subscribed, well, why not do it now? Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next episode. Bye for now.